Magnets like these are a blessing and a curse. They can be both attractive and repulsive. On the Marble Machine X, we're using hidden disc magnets in this wheel to transport the marbles up. This lifting system works really well, but there is one problem. The marbles get magnetized. These marbles are not magnetized. I can move this marble away and the other marble don't care. When we put both marbles on a magnet. So look now, now they're magnetized and they become gluey to each other. Now let's try a group of marbles that have not been magnetized. But let's see now what happens when we magnetize these marbles. These are the exact same marbles that we just rolled. Yeah, that tells the story, doesn't it? So this is the marble routing sketch for the Marble Machine X. Green symbolizes lift, and this is the first magnetic marble ring lift. Then the marbles go connecting to the second magnetic marble ring lift here. And then they will go up to a fish there that will take the marbles all the way onto the top and onto the marble divider. The function of both the fish there and the marble divider will be compromised if the marbles are even slightly magnetized. So if I can't fix this, there will be no world tour. <laughs> I started by looking at different methods of demagnetization. You can demagnetize something by using brute force or by using heat or by using induction. None of these three methods are practical on the Marble Machine X. The fourth method is electricity. And I don't want to implement electricity into the machine because of aesthetical reasons. So I went with method number five to create a magnetic field with alternating polarities because this we can try to do mechanically. To test this method, I started some experiments. I built this marble track, which has a five degree slope, and I put these two disc magnets on a magnetic rod. By spinning these disc magnets around, you will have a magnetic field with alternating polarities. Then I took the marbles and I magnetized them, and as you can see, they don't roll on the five degree slope. But when I take the marbles one by one and put them close to the alternating magnetic field and then pull them away slowly, the idea is that the marble will be plus and then minus and then plus and then minus, but then a little bit less plus, a little bit less minus, a little bit less plus and even less minus until there's no magnetism left in the marble. And then I went back to the slope and I tried rolling them and it worked. So now I knew that the principle of demagnetization by alternating decreasing magnetic field worked. But the question remained, how do I implement this into the Marble Machine X in an elegant way? one machining operation and I'm just adjusting, offsetting the CNC machine until it hits the glue layer. If you see on the side, you see the black lines. And here I went too deep, so that's a white spot. I don't care about that. So by making this groove and hitting this glue layer, I get this contrast and I make this part look much more complex. This is how it looks without it. So this is the back side where I didn't make that ornament. So this is purely aesthetics, has, has nothing to do with any function, but I think you could agree with me that it makes the part look so much better.
the demagnetizing wheel is done and now I had to figure out how fast we have to spin the wheel and how to get the wheel to turn at all on the Marble Machine X. And I had in the back of my mind that these planet gears of the planetary gear set are idle and sit on a cage that is rigidly attached to the frame of the machine. So we could extend one shaft from the planet gears to connect to the demagnetizing wheel and get the rotation of the demagnetizing wheel for free, so to speak, which would be super elegant solution. But before I could go for that ID, I needed to control that the RPM of the planet gear was fast or slow enough. So I needed to measure the sweet spot where the demagnetizing wheel demagnetizes the marbles most effectively. Earlier in the day, when I made the experiment with the drill, I started to measure the RPM by adding a flap of tape on the axle and then inserting a contact microphone into the tape flap and recording the audio. By recording the audio from the tape flap, I could measure the revolutions per minute with extremely high precision. And what I found was a little bit of a surprise. This caught me a little bit off guard because the drill was in time with 120 BPM. Let me put a kick drum to that. the task at hand it was only because this stupid drill was exactly 120 bpm martin here back from planet procrastination i'm on to the rpm problem again and i found uh, this video on youtube from the play with junk youtube channel with a very appetizing title demagnetizing steel marbles for a marble machine and that title caught my attention of course and i got in touch with christian from Play With Junk and I showed him some pictures of my work in progress demagnetizing wheel and he told me when he saw the pictures that I should not spin the wheel too fast, that there has to be some time for the demagnetization to actually take place. To my surprise, when I conducted the experiment, the slower rotation of the wheels actually demagnetized the marbles better than the faster rotation of the wheel did. And this is super good news because the speed of the planet gears is one quarter of the speed of the crank. So if I play a normal song, maybe 120 BPM, the planet gears will have 30 BPM or RPM per minute. Funnily enough, this 30 RPM seemed to be a kind of a sweet spot from the experiment. So, so sometimes there's like you have a little engineering luck and this was definitely one of those occasions. Another big source of inspiration for this design was this sketch from Alexei Ivanov who made a mechanical degausser demagnetizer a while back once this problem first occurred. And Alexei has the marbles running perpendicular to the wheel and I have the marbles running parallel to the wheel, which is actually the only difference. So I'm thankful to both Alexei and Christian for providing background foundation for this whole solution. So by adding this part, we're now one step closer to finishing the machine. But building Marble Machine X is not our end goal. Once the machine is finished, we want to record a new album and head out on a world tour with my band Vintergatan, featuring Marble Machine X on stage. And this is the real goal we are working towards, to travel the world and play live music for you all with the Marble Machine X on stage is a big, big dream for me. 
We will cover the whole process of trying to make this dream come true here on Vintelot on Wednesdays. Every week we will add another piece to this puzzle. Thanks so much for watching and see you on the next Vintelot on Wednesdays.